Because my soul, because my soul is, prospering. is prospering. I'm making, I'm making great, decisions. great decisions. My thinking, my thinking is, prosperous. is prosperous. And when I'm under pressure, I'm under pressure. I, will I will not say the wrong thing. The wrong thing. In, Jesus In Jesus' name. Do you receive that? Amen. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You can have your seats. Thank you, Lord. Well, I guess we are live just a little bit early before we were expected to, but <laughs> we will go ahead and move forward. Again, I want to thank God for those of you that are here in person at Anointed Word of Faith Church. Come on, let's give yourselves a hand. Thank you, Lord. And I also want you to join me and give a hand to those folks that, folks that are joining us online. Let's give those folks a hand. Our extended church family, amen. And um, I, uh, for those of you that are joining us online, we have just received, um, we have just had something we call here five minutes uh, for financial faith. And we have that preceding our offering every week we are working on somehow uh, making that digital, deciding which way we want to go so that you guys can join us concerning that. In the meantime, if you would like to be a part of the offering today, please go to awofc.org where you will find options to give, to tithe, and to sow your seed. Again, that's awofc.org. Uh, when you go there, just remember as you release your tithe and your offering, know what it does. Your tithe and your offering gives us or helps us uh, pay the bills, helps us meet the needs of other people, and continue to get the gospel out, which we will do no matter what. Amen? Come on, let's give the Lord a praise for that. All right. Um, before we move forward, uh, really briefly, I'm going to have uh, the praise team that's left here. I know Sister Chelsea had to leave, I believe, a little early to uh, come up and uh, give us a song. After that, we will prepare to go into the Word, okay? Let's greet our praise team that's coming any, any second now. Glory be to God. Amen. Greet them by saying, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.
you to turn it on and hit the space bar is how you're going to turn it on. Don't give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy. Amen. Thank the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wee. Glory to God. <laughs> All right. We're going to get ready to, uh, we're going to pray, and then we're going to release our faith. We're going to pray, and we're going to release our faith concerning our giving, and then we will prepare to move forward in the word. Amen. Amen. All right, if you would with me, I'd like to ask you to go ahead and stand. And I'm going to lead you in a word of prayer. And then we are going to prepare to, um, we are actually going to release our faith concerning our words now, let me say this really quick. I know we got two minutes. We're a little early uh, with some technical difficulties with our recording here. Um, and, I, and I say this a lot. You know, where your giving and your tithing is concerned, the kingdom of God, it's not really a magical kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. But it's, it's not a magical kingdom. Well, what do I mean by that? See, magic says you can cast a spell or make a potion, right? And it just automatically happens. See, the kingdom or spiritual things typically require your cooperation. And your part is to use your faith. And faith is released by the words of your mouth. Amen? Amen. So your giving and the harvest from your giving is connected to you hearing, you believing, and you saying, glory be to God. So you can't sow and give and sit back, not believe anything, not hear anything, and not say anything. Amen? So what, this is why we do this every time we give to give you an opportunity to release your faith so that you stay in the habit of that. Amen? Ooh, that's good. I like that even more for myself. Have mercy. All right. Let's uh, get ready to pray again. I'm going to pray and lead you in a word of prayer. And directly after that prayer, we are going to confess the scripture that we are standing on. Amen? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you are our very own Father, and uh, we are your very own children. And Lord, we thank you that you have translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light where we prosper continually. And Father, we give you the glory and the honor because you're perfect in all your ways. The system and the kingdom that you set for us is amazing, wonderful, and it is always working. Now, Jesus, high priest, we come before you, Lord. We give you glory and we give you honor. We reverence you, sir. And uh, we ask you to take our tithe and our offering to the Father and worship him on our behalf. Uh, and as you do so, we believe that the windows of heaven are open to us, and that the blessing is being poured out on us in overflow. We claim tithers' rights. As we've given, we believe that it is being given to us with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. The wealth of the unrighteous is being transferred over to us now, and we decree and thank you that the devourer is rebuked for our sake. Now, I want you to declare this with me from 2 Corinthians 9th chapter, 8th verse. 
all grace. Come on, say it like you mean it, like you got a harvest coming. Don't be shy. Don't be scared. Say, all grace is abounding towards me, making me sufficient in all things, causing me to abound to every good work. In Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a praise if you receive that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. You can have your seats. Well, I believe you just received something right there. I believe your tithe, your seed, and your offering just went to work for you. Amen. Now, um, right before we jump into this word, uh, I want to restate uh, to the folks online something that I mentioned earlier before uh, we uh, went live. Um, uh, concerning the vision of this ministry. Uh, the vision of this ministry contains four primary areas, and those areas have uh, different things that they span off into and different areas that they cover and focus in. But those four areas, uh, we will, uh, starting next week, we're going to start playing those, and we're going to have that available on our church page, uh, on our Facebook church page, rather, and you'll also be able to find it at awofc.org, and then it will also uh, be playing here in the church a few minutes before our service starts on Sunday morning at 12 o'clock. So just be mindful of that. Be looking for that uh, because we are excited about the direction of the Lord concerning this. Amen. All right, we're going to get ready to pray, and then we're going to jump into the Word, and we're going to move. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to handle the Word of life, for the opportunity, Lord, to preach and teach this Word today in excellence, accuracy, and boldness. Now, Lord, I'm asking for your help to do it, as I cannot do it without you. I'm asking that your anointing fall on me fresh, adding increase to my efforts and cooperation. Now, Lord, I also pray that this word would be easy to be understood, that the eyes of the understanding of those who hear are enlightened, and open, that questions are answered, that fears are calmed, that hope is restored, replaced, renewed, and deposited in those who hear. Now, Lord, I thank you for that, and I believe that's working now. I believe you're giving me utterance right now to declare this word as I ought to. Now, Satan, I break your power and I cancel your assignment. I decree that this word shall come forward unhindered by you or any of your camp. In Jesus' name, if you believe it, shout amen. amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. Uh, turn over with me, if you will, and I'm sure you will, have mercy, because this is a turning church. Uh, how are we doing with our pens, papers, and pencils? Did we? Do, are we ready? Are we ready to take some notes? I'm telling. We stay. That's what I'm talking about. Where's my buddy? Did somebody miss some money last week? Who's supposed to get some money? Did you miss it? You just let it go like that? Was it seed? Glory to God. Come on up here and get your seed. Come on up here. Let the Lord use it. Glory to God. Amen. Ooh, them revelation answers. I like it. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. You know, I, um, I uh, had a conversation this past week with uh, someone, and, and this individual I know uh, watches these videos, and I, and I don't mean to call you out or anything like that, but I just wanted to share um, what, we, what was mentioned. It's an individual that's 
connected to one of our business partnerships uh, for Chelsea and I. And um, apparently he was referred uh, to our YouTube channel from someone, a mutual uh, connection there. And uh, he said, you know, uh, he said, uh, I want you to know that and these folks live in another state, he and his wife. He said, you know, those people are definitely getting what they need with that kind of preaching. Amen. I said, get yourself out of here. I said that to myself, didn't say it out loud. And he said, his explanation, which was so funny, he said, I appreciate, first of all, he said, I appreciate you teaching and preaching that word. Please keep the videos coming. Don't stop. And then he said this. He said, I find it to be positively unorthodox. <laughs> positively unorthodox. I believe I quoted him. He said, it's unorthodox and extremely positive. And, uh, and I tell you what, that's exactly what we're shooting for. Glory be to God. We're not intending to be in the normal uh, church bunch. We want uh, to get this word out just as raw as we possibly can. Amen? Uh, now, turn over with me, if you will. I was going to go out my laptop potentially, but I believe I'll use it. Let's go over to 2 Peter, the first chapter. We're going to start there and then we're going to end in Matthew. 2 Peter, chapter 1. And uh, by the way, we have been working on our audio so I believe our, our audio should be sufficient at this point for those of you online. Uh, so we uh, pray that that is better. I know that audio is important. It's important for me. Uh, I just want you to know, in case you're wondering, whenever the audio does not sound right, I don't like it every single time. I don't like it. I want it to be crystal clear. And so we are working diligently to keep it that way and it should be the case for today, all right? Now, um, 2 Peter chapter 1, before we get into the actual text, I want to give you an idea of what we're going to be talking about here today. And um, if there was a subject and I really don't like to be bound to subjects. Um, we're going to talk about access through revealed knowledge. Let me say that again. Access through revealed knowledge. Now, let me start here. So, when you and I were born again, amazing, and I want to use this word, transcendent things happened to us in the realm of the spirit. Let me say that again. When you and I were born again, amazing, transcendent things happened to us in the realm of the spirit. Where is the realm of the spirit? The realm of the spirit is an actual place of existence that has government and rule that's operating beyond 186,000 miles per second. Yeah. Now, amazing things happened 
to you in the realm of the spirit from the inside out when you and I got born again. Now, when I say transcendent, transcendent means beyond or above the range of normal or merely physical human experience. Hopefully I didn't get too deep. Let me read that again. Let me say that again. Transcendent. This is what happened to us when you and I were born again. Watch this. It happened in a way that was beyond or above the range of normal or merely physical human experience. Now, the things that happened in the spirit realm happened in a place where my senses don't work. What do I mean my senses? What I can see with my physical eye. What I could feel or touch. Let me get deeper into the biblical definition of, sen of uh, senses. It happened in the place, in a place where what I am seeing in the natural is different from what is actually taking place in that realm. Does that make sense? So I can't tell what is happening over there or what has happened to me based off of what I see, what I feel, what I hear, or what my circumstances currently look like. Are you with me? Yeah, that's right. Ooh, now that's enough. We can go home right there. Glory be to God. Now, consider this. I really want to stick with my order here because I really need to get this out the right way. Now, my senses don't work there, but it does not change the reality of what took place. Furthermore, it does not change what has already been made available to me as a born-again believer. You're with me so far, right? Now, watch this. To get results from the things that have already happened to me in the realm of the spirit, when did they happen? When did they happen in the spirit? When I got born again, right? To get results from the things that have already happened, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to actually have to go into the realm of the spirit and take them. Ooh, that's enough to make you run right there. Now, you got to see this. In order to get what has already happened and what's available in the realm of the Spirit to work in my life, I need to go in, literally, into the realm of the Spirit, and I need to take them. They are not going to automatically work. They're not going to automatically yield benefits over in my life. I must go in and take them. Now, Jesus refers to this taking in the word receive in the Gospels. All the time when you see the word receive, receive ye the gift of the Holy Ghost. Ask and you shall receive. Believe you receive it. That means believe you take it. Ask and go in and take it. Claim it. Take it as yours. Now, watch this. Do you, do you remember that scripture that says, and we know that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, then we know we have the petitions that we desire of him. Now, 
that is still an offensive position as it relates to the benefits that you're praying for. I'm not just praying for them, I'm taking them. So I say, Lord, you said in your word that this is your will, this is what you want from me, I believe, I receive it, I take it, I have it now in Jesus' name. From that point, then my actions need to start consistently corresponding with what I have believed, I received, and have taken. Are you with me? Is that good? That's worth coming to church for, ain't it? Glory to God. Now watch this. Now, how do we go into the spirit realm and take it? Now, that's a rhetorical question. So that means it doesn't, re it doesn't require an answer just yet. Glory be to God. If we we're at Bill Winston's church, he'll say, I, I, I got this. I, I, let me preach this thing, right? <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm glad you're listening. Now, that's where 2 Peter chapter 1 comes in. And I'm going to read this really quick, starting from verse 2. Are you ready to read this with me? Now, watch this. This is Peter writing to believers. This is applicable to believers. And as a matter of fact, in verse 1, he says to them who have obtained like precious faith with us. In other words, then who, who have been born again just like us. Now, look at verse 2. Let's read this together. On three. One, two, three, read. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Stop right there. Now, grace and peace. Grace Grace can be defined a lot of different ways. It can be defined as power, depending on its context, favor, earthly blessing. But here, we're going to define grace this way. All earthly favor and blessings. Watch this. All earthly favor and blessings, according to 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, rendering of the word grace. Grace can also be the person of the Holy Spirit and his activity towards an individual. But watch this. All favor and earthly blessings and what else? Peace be multiplied to you. How do I get favor and earthly blessings and peace multiplied to me? Watch this, through the knowledge of God, through the knowledge of God. Now, this knowledge here is not just any knowledge. Whenever you're dealing with the knowledge of the most powerful, undisputed, undefeated being in all of existence, then we're not talking about regular knowledge. We're talking about knowledge on a supernatural level. We call that knowledge what? Revelation knowledge. Now watch this. Grace, favor, earthly blessings, and peace. Well, what is peace? Peace here is the absence of turmoil. It's the absence of of turmoil, which is typically a byproduct of toil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is toil again? Toil is when I'm late, hard, laborious, sweating work that are only producing minimal results. Why? Because I'm working and God is not working. Why is God not working? Because I'm doing my job and his job. How am I doing that? I'm carrying the care of my situation. How am I carrying the care of my situation? Because I have not gone to the word to use my faith, to get a promise to stand on, 
to get victory in this particular area, right? So now I'm in toil, and now turmoil is a byproduct of that. But here he says, grace and the opposite of turmoil be multiplied unto you, come to you in abundance. How? Through the avenue of revealed knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Now, are you with me so far? Are you still here? Have you gone home? You taking your notes? This is good. See, these are the kind of notes that you go back in the week and read. You hear me? And study, glory be to God, and you'll find yourself walking in victory, understanding what to do. This is how you get revelation knowledge. Now, turn over with me real quickly. Let's deviate here. Go over to Matthew chapter 16, and I want you to look at verse 15. Turn quick. I got 20 something minutes left and I gotta I gotta be done glory be to God Matthew chapter 16 and we're gonna read verse 15 Matthew M-A-T-H-E-W is how you spell it glory be to God <laughs> trying to help them, glory be to God. I'm trying to help them. Say, it's a process. Not M -A M -A T We're in the spirit, glory be to God. We ain't in the flesh. We're in the spirit. <laughs> We're in the spirit, glory be to God. <laughs> he, he was trying to tell me, he said, there's no such thing as Matthew in, in Blue Letter Bible, glory be to God. Well, we got it. Have mercy. Now, Matthew chapter 16, verse 15. I tell you, it doesn't matter what you're currently lacking in your natural circumstances. When you go in the Word and see who you are or your future, things change. I tell you what. I don't care what's happening. It is subject to change. Now, look at verse 15. It says, now, whom do men, Jesus is saying this to the disciples. He says, he first he asked them, whom do men say that I am? Then they had all these responses. Some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say that you're a prophet, you're Elijah. Then in verse 15, Jesus says unto them, but whom do you say I am? Verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, Peter responded with some knowledge here. And here's what he said. Look at verse, verse 17. This was Jesus' response to it. Look what he said. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed. Or what does the word blessed mean? Empowered to prosper. What about it? Art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not done what? Revealed it unto thee. The knowledge that Peter just got was not natural knowledge. It didn't come from experience. It didn't come from flesh and blood. This was a different kind of knowledge. It was the kind of knowledge that is revealed. What are we talking about? Revelation knowledge. Do you got it? Yes. We're are we convinced there? That this is revelation knowledge? Yes. What revelation knowledge did he get? That this man in the natural came from the realm of the spirit sent by God to destroy the yoke off of mankind. Now watch this. I don't want to get too deep. I don't want to get too in the clouds. But can, can I just point this out? Do you notice 
revelation knowledge allowed him to get truth from the realm of the spirit that could be applied to natural things happening in the earth. Watch this. At the very least, spiritual knowledge helped him to identify activity, movement, and action in the natural realm. Isn't that good? So revelation knowledge for you and I can help you identify things that are moving, activity, and motion, agendas, or even people in the realm of the natural where we live at. Did I say that right? Woo-wee. Chelsea was here. She'd tell me if I got it right or not. She'd help me. Glory be to God. Now watch this. Now, revelation knowledge is what we see here. Now, look at verse 18. And I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, meaning rock. Watch this. And upon this what? And upon this rock. Now, the word rock here is the idea of foundation. The idea of rock is the foundation in which something is established or built on. Upon this foundation, what will I do? I will build my church. Watch this, I will do what? What is the church? Who is the church? Is he talking about the physical building? He's talking about the people, right? Upon this foundation of what will I build my church? Revelation knowledge. I will build the people up from the foundation of revealed knowledge. Knowledge from the spirit realm that will transcend things happening in the natural change things in the natural, give answers in the natural, help me identify natural activity. You and I are built to operate this way, right? Now, I will build the people this way, and watch this, and the gates of hell, can anybody tell me why you would put a gate around your house or your building? What's the purpose of the gate? It is to keep people out. That's the gate. It's not to let people in, right? If it was to let people in, then you don't need a gate. Just, hey, just come on in. The door's wide open. Well, here he says that hell has a gate to it. The kingdom of darkness, the establishment of Satan, his army, his kingdom, his agenda, his activity, his government has a gate around it. Now, why would the big bad wolf need a gate if he is so menacing, so powerful, and so dangerous? Why would he need a gate? What did you say, Hal? Why? To keep me out. To keep you. <laughs> you better preach it. The gates of hell shall not what? Prevail. When we read that, we automatically assume that it's saying the gates of hell won't be able to overtake us. No. The gates of hell won't be able to hold us out. Do you see that? Now, this is the believer that's offensive, right? What kind of believer is this, folks? The believer that is built up on what? Revelation knowledge. Now, let's go back. I don't want you to get lost here. How do we go into the realm of the spirit and take 
what already belongs to us through revelation knowledge. I need to go get knowledge of what belongs to me and the abilities that I already have, and I got to take it. How am I going to do that? Through the avenue of revelation knowledge. Knowledge of a spiritual nature. Right. Now, this is not the kind of knowledge that you get in a university. Right. Right. See, that kind of knowledge is education. We're not talking about natural education. We're talking about revealed knowledge. Now watch this. Do I got a few more minutes? Yes. This is about to get interesting. Glory be to God. Now watch this. Now, the gates of hell cannot stop the person operating in revelation knowledge. Now, what does that say about the believer that's operating in revelation knowledge in terms of what kind of knowledge he has or what about, what is it that he knows that requires Satan to have a gate. Watch this. The believer that has revelation knowledge will always live life offensively as instead of defensively. The believer that has revelation knowledge or that is operating by revelation knowledge understands that his mission is to go and take. Yes. Yes. It is impossible for this believer to comfortably stay into agreement with a victim's mentality. Yes. Does that make sense? Right. It's going to be difficult for this kind of believer that has revelation knowledge to just settle for surviving. Right? Yes sitting back waiting for the storm to pass over. No, this is the kind of people that talk the storms. Storm, I say you better go in the name of Jesus. You bet not touch that roof in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God, I'm telling you what, I'm not paying one deductible. Don't you come here. Get out of my neighborhood. Get out of my region. You go. Isn't that something? So this guy or this girl knows that they have the power to go and take. This is a person that knows what belongs to them. Are you with me? Now, <clears throat> okay, I got to move. I got to move. Lord, you got to get me through this a little faster, Lord. We got a little bit of time. Glory be to God. Now, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now look at the next verse. Verse 19. Then Jesus says, you notice right here it says, I will give, right here in King James. Better translation of that is, and it is given. He, to the person that has revelation knowledge, he is not necessarily going to get something. He is already in possession of this thing. Right? So, and it is given unto thee. Watch the watch this. The keys of the kingdom of the government of the jurisdictional government authority and rule of heaven that is operating in the earth. The keys belong to this person. What does he do with these keys? And whatsoever thou shalt do, shall what? Bind on earth, shall be what? Bound in heaven. Now watch this. When you have the keys, you're not going to heaven to get the permission to bind something. Right. 
when you already have revelation knowledge concerning what belongs to you, in this case, your authority, you're simply using the keys that you already know belong to you. So when you decide to use the keys, you are binding something that is already bound in heaven. See, I went and found out that devils are under my jurisdiction, are under my authority. So when I bind them and say, Satan, devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus, shut your mouth. I'm operating from a place of revelation knowledge where I understand that I already have authority over this devil. So I'm using the authority that I already know I have. Now watch this. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth, one translation of this actually says, is already loosed in heaven. So when I'm loosing something, watch this. It's like when I say, I speak, I speak increase over your situation in Jesus' name. Take it right now. I say in Jesus' name, be healed right now of that pain in your left side. Be healed and made whole right now. I curse, I bind that back pain, and I release healing in that area of your body in the name of Jesus. You know, I have a brother that is in, uh, I have a brother that is in rehab, and he is um, a tetraplegic, uh, where he's not able to walk, move his hands, arms, and so forth and so on, and as a result, he goes into the hospital, he was going into the hospital often, and every time the doctors were saying, hey, you know what, he's dead. He's going to die. It's a done deal. Prepare yourself. Please just give us permission to not revive him when he dies because he can't make it. He's not going to make it. It is a done deal, right? So you know what I do? I just started from the place of revelation knowledge of the word of God. Every time I go up there, I would just bind and loose. I would say I bind I break the power of pain in his body. I come against infection in the name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of infirmity that's keeping you from walking. And I just would just, every time I go up there by myself, nobody around, I'm just praying for, I would just bind and bind. And then I would loose. I loose healing. I loose mental increase in the name of Jesus. I loose, uh, I loose um, um, joy. I loose uh, um, healing and restoration over your body. I speak it over you. I declare it in Jesus' name. And don't you know, I had a conversation this morning where he's coming home this week out of rehab. When it looked impossible over and over, we just kept operating in the place of revealed knowledge, binding and loose. What are we doing? We're using the keys. We're unlocking healing. We're locking the door on sickness and disease. We're locking the door on poverty, unlocking the door to financial increase and joy. Glory be to God and results. Amen? Woo-hoo! I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Glory to God. Now, watch this. This, this, is, this. this is just amazing. Watch this. Oh, oh, my goodness. I'm almost out of time. I got nine minutes. I got nine minutes. Watch this. Now, where am I going to find this revelation knowledge? Where am I going to find this revelation knowledge. Go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Look at verse 12 really quick. 
Now, I am literally painting the picture step by step yeah. on what all you got to do is go eat the cake. Eat the cake, anime. Yeah, yeah. Just go and eat it, anime. Now, I'm telling you, here it is. It's out on the table. Go and be the God. All you got to do is pick it up and eat it. Yeah. Look at this verse right here. For the word of God. The Word of God, folks, is the source of revelation knowledge. That's a note that you want to take. The Word of God is the source. Let me, re, let me restate that. Actually, the Word of God is the primary source of revelation knowledge. Why is that? Because that primary source is operating inside of people as well. There are men and women of God that have that word operating in them in revelatory form and as a result they are using it, preaching it, and teaching it. They are using it, preaching it, and teaching it. Now that when the word is in revelatory form in an area you know it because it's working for the person that is releasing it. It works for the person that is releasing it. Now watch this. For the word of God, the source of revelation knowledge that takes us into the, that allows us to go into the realm of the spirit and take what's belonging to us or what already is ours and then use it in the natural to our benefit. What about it? That word of God is quick and powerful. Here's what that means. It is alive and active. The word of God is alive and active. Now watch this. Look at this part. We read this verse, but I think we miss what this verse actually is saying here. It's alive and it's active. What's alive and what's active, folks? The Word of God, right? And in that Word, there's what? What's in it? Revelation, knowledge. And I can use that revelation knowledge to go where? Into the realm of the Spirit. And what could I get there? My benefits. The benefits that are there, are they just now coming? Or have they already been there? And when did they get there available for me? When I got born again. Woo, you just preached it. You got it right, glory be to God. Now watch this. Now, that word is active and it's alive. Now consider this. If something is alive, then it's able to move and do things. It's, all, it's active as well. It is moving. It is accomplishing. One scripture says that the world is upheld by the power of what? Of the word of God. G one in the Old Testament, God is quoted as saying that uh, I exalted my word above my name, meaning my authority or my power. In other words, my power doesn't come on the scene until my word moves and is activated. So here, you see the word of God is alive and it is actively working. Now, what about it? What is it doing? And why is Paul telling us this? And now people will argue, well, how do you know that Paul wrote Hebrews? Because he did. That's how I know he did. Go find out. He did. Now, watch this. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. What does that mean? Watch this. Piercing even to the dividing asunder. So the word is operating in such a way that it can go in between. Watch this. Soul and spirit. Watch this. Here's revelation knowledge. The word is so precise it is so powerful 
and can see so much that in its activity, it can diagnose inside of the believer what is needed in his or her soul man, in his mind, will, and emotions, and what is needed in its spirit, in his or her spirit. Did you get it? You, you didn't get it. Let me say a little different. Let me say a little different. Let me, let me elaborate it. I'm saying when you are meditating on the word of God, getting revelation knowledge, that word will begin to move inside of you and become active because it's alive and it will get over to your mind, your will and emotions, whatever you are missing to be complete in any particular area you're putting it to work in. It'll come into your spirit and show you and get the food that you need. <coughs> Glory to God. Now listen, how, listen, in your spirit, you remember this word? Let me tell you this. Um, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, his mind is unfruitful. How be it, his mind is unfruitful. Somebody look up that verse for me. I want to quote that right. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, his mind is unfruitful. According to web.mit.edu. Google said they wanted to help me out a little bit because they're going to be quick. Listen, it says this in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 14. If I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. Now, when my spirit is praying, it's able to do something or give my spirit man something it needs. Now, your spirit man, one thing it always needs is food. Man shall not live by what? Bread, bread. <coughs> bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now watch this. He who speaketh in an unknown tongue prayeth not unto man, but unto God. And what does the rest of it say? He does what? <clears throat> excuse me, edifies himself. He edifies himself. Listen, to edify, somebody find that verse for me. I don't want you to be razzle-dazzle. I want you to know how to go to that verse. And I'm out of time, deviating right here. He edifies himself. Somebody find that verse for me. First Corinthians 14, what? Go to verse 4. Okay, right. Watch this. Listen, this is good. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, talking about how do you speak in an unknown tongue, praying in an unknown tongue, See, sometimes when you're, when you're in your prayer time and you're walking around praying and you're at your home, you need to in yourself set yourself in agreement with it before you pray and say, I am edifying myself right now. See, when you're praying in the spirit, the spirit has different functions. It's accomplishing different things. There's times where revelation is being released and developed and uncovered that you don't have anything to do with that you don't know anything about there's times that while you're praying in the spirit <clears throat> there's a conversation and a back and forth between you and god but there are times where you are praying in the spirit and you are doing nothing but building up your spirit man one translation of edifieth is to charge himself like a battery 
So you can see here that the Word of God is able to get things over not only to my soul, but also over to my spirit that I need. The Word of God is alive. That's how it can do it. It's active. It can see whatever is needed. Oh, Lord have mercy. I may be preaching that. Am I preaching that in the right place? Wee! Now, go back. Go back with me really quick. Go back. Go back to 2 Peter. Go back to 2 Peter. Have mercy. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Go back to Hebrews. No, no, I, I got I to gotta finish that part. You got to see this. I got to see that. You, you, I got to show you this. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It's alive, right? It can determine what is needed, asunder it needed in the soul and in the spirit, and get what it needs to it, and to the joints and marrow. Why? It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. It knows what the heart is thinking. It knows what the soul or the mind is doing as well. Watch. Neither is there any creature or created thing that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him we have to do with. In other words, the word of God can see everything. Everything about you. Whatever is missing, the Word of God has the peace that you need to be healthy. So you got to spend time in it, you and I, so that you can get the unhealthy parts of us, so that we can get the unhealthy parts of us corrected, get them fixed, get them fulfilled. Well, why doesn't happen? Because we don't spend that time in there so that it can do surgery on us. Right? Now, now, okay, let's go back to, uh, I'm going to have to stop. I'm going to have to stop here. Lord, have mercy. They said we're going to run anyhow, glory to God. Second Peter, verse 4, 2 Peter 1, verse 4. No, wait a minute. Verse 3. Picking right back up where we left off, right? Verse 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things. Say all things. All things. Whose power are we talking about? God's. Divine means of a spiritual nature, right? He's given us unto us all things that pertain to what? Life. What is life? Now, the word life right here in the Greek is zoe, which means the life force of God. Watch this. In you. It is the life force of God himself operating in you, right? It is the force that makes God God that is operating inside of you, the believer. Are you with me? Now watch this. It also means this. It's characterized by a life that is active and also vigorous. Vigorous means this, strong, healthy, and full of energy. So unto God has given unto us all things that pertain to the very life force of God living in us that causes us to be active and vigorous, strong, healthy, and full of energy. And watch this. It also means devoted to God and empowered to prosper or blessed. Did you get that? Is that not amazing? Lord Jesus. Somebody just, if that's just somebody just hit the, the 
hit the, the, the thumbs up sign or something just so I know that that is amazing. Glory be to God. Get online and just say, that is amazing. Glory to God. The life force of God has been given to me, and it's operating in me, producing a life that is active, vigorous, strong, healthy, full of energy, and devoted to God and empowering me to prosper. This has been given unto me, right? How? Wait a minute, there's one other thing that's been given to me. Woo-hoo! This is the, watch, I, I got to get this. Then I'm going to have to stop with this verse. Life and godliness. Now, the word godliness in the Greek here is a Greek word pronounced, the best I could pronounce it, I'm not a Greek scholar, is Eusebia or Eusebia. Right? Now, Y-O-O-S-E-B-I-A-H is the pronunciation of that. Now, godliness here means piety. Does anybody know what piety means? You ever met someone that is pious in a healthy sense? Piety means... A, a godly attitude, this depicts one who is equipped to do what is pleasing to the Lord and who takes his service to the Lord seriously and is committed to fulfilling his or her duty. Now, you've been given all things necessary to enable you to be, uh, to operate with a godly attitude that caught, where you are equipped to do the things that are pleasing to the Lord, you are already equipped to take the Christian life serious enough to where not only are you committed to it, but you are committed to fulfilling your Christian godly duties. You have been given all things in both of those areas, life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge. Did you get it? Woohoo! You thought I lost my subject, didn't you? I didn't lose it. I'm right there on it, Lord. I'm right there on it. Through the knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Revelation knowledge. Where do I get revealed knowledge? In the Word. When I go in the Word, it is a, it's a discerner. It can see what what needs my soul. And then what else? What my spirit needs. Get over to me what I need. That knowledge is going to come in the form of what? Revelation. Where am I going to do with it? I'm going where? Into the realm of the spirit. And I'm taking it. I've taken it. I've taken it. I've taken it in the area of my finances. Lord, give me revelation in the word of God so I can see what decisions to make financially. So I can see what decisions to make in my relationships. What decisions to make in my family, in my parenting, in my ministry. Hello? I'm not exempt. Glory be to God. Me too. It's easier to preach it than to do it. Glory be to God. If it feels the other way around, then I'd be on easy street. Have mercy. I may be inclined to take a few more vacations. But no, you got to do it. You got to do it. Now watch this. All things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to what? Glory and virtue. Now listen, I want everybody to stand. I think that is a great stopping point for the day. Keep going, don't cut off. As a believer, 
You have been wired to live in the supernatural. And the good news is you don't have to live in the supernatural by your own efforts alone. There is a su supernatural tool that's been given to you and I that can take us into a place where the benefits have already been given to us and give us the ability to take them and bring them over into our natural lives. I would encourage you into this. What is it that you need? What is it that you need? What is it? I wonder what benefits are sitting in your bag. Glory be to God. I wonder what benefits are in your storehouse waiting for you to go in and access and bring them into manifestation in the areas that you need. Isn't it interesting that you're not waiting on God to do it? Why? Because he's already done it. He's already done it. He's waited on you. That is one of the most sobering things about living by faith. Because in religion, you're taught to believe that you're always waiting on God. And in religion, you live without the benefits. Because it's not being preached that you are supposed to go in and take so you live without the benefits. And because you and I live without the benefits, we're unable to articulate to the world what's actually available for them. Do you see that? Now, you know the two areas, the two primarily areas where this is happening the most within the body of Christ? It is within the religious church and the black church. It's the religious church and the black church. Living without the benefits. Because in religion, particularly in the black church, they just taught us how to shout and praise, which is good. Glory be to God. But they didn't teach us how to take the tools, how to operate in a place of revelation knowledge. And in the religious church, what do I mean the religious church? I mean the majority of all Christian churches in America are religious, the majority of them. It taught us to feel our way into everything. Kumbaya everything. Instead of revealed knowledge that empowers you on purpose to operate in the supernatural. Did you get something out of that today? Come on, let's give the Lord a praise for that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise for that. We owe him a praise. We owe him a praise because he just unlocked us. Glory be to God. He just broke things off of us that we're on and now we can see clearly glory be to God thank you Lord Jesus nothing shall be impossible to you nothing is impossible to you nothing I mean absolutely nothing shall be impossible to you all things are possible to him that believes and you believe because revelation knowledge is working for you. I want you to say this in Jesus' name. In Jesus name I, decree, I decree right now, right now at, this at this moment and forever, and forever that revelation knowledge, revelation knowledge is working in me. Working in me. Revelation, knowledge revelation knowledge is equipping me, equipping me to go into the spirit, into the spirit get, my get my benefits, and bring them to my natural life. Benefits are working for me right now. Any day they could show up. 
any day, my supernatural, my miracle is showing up for me. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Give him a crazy praise for that. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these, your precious people. And I thank you for this word, Lord, today. And I thank you, Lord, that this word right now is being confirmed with signs, wonders, and miracles in those that have heard it, that will hear it. It is working. It is active. It is moving right now. We praise you and we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, as we leave this place, the biggest miracle is your strength in us, helping us to be a doer of this word and not just a hearer. Lord, I pray for anybody where their strength falls weak, that you would help our unbelief. Help the unbelief of the person that says, I want it, Lord, but it's just, I need help doing it. I need your strength. I pray for that person right now and decree and loose over you that you be strengthened in your spirit by his spirit right now in Jesus' name. Be built up. Be edified. I decree that the joy of the Lord is your strength. I come against every agreement in the realm of darkness against you. I bind it. I cancel it right now. Every altar, I destroy every altar against you right now in the name of Jesus. And every witchcraft, every bit of witchcraft in you concerning reproduction, concerning the joy of parenting concerning having children. I break off any hindrances that would keep you from having children right now in the name of Jesus for those that desire it. I bind loneliness in the name of Jesus. I decree that you are not alone. Loneliness is not your portion in the name of Jesus. I decree that depression, depression, you go right now. You take your hands off of God's people right now. You have no dominion over them. You go. I break your power. I cancel your assignment in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to death. And I cancel it off of your life. Debt you go. The year of Jubilee is here and it belongs to them. I come against every attack of racism against you in the name of Jesus. I come against it right now in the name of Jesus. No music. No music. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that these things are done and they're happening now in Jesus' name. One more time, give the Lord one more shout of praise if you agree with that prayer. If it is established for you, just take it right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. I just want to give the Lord the honor and the glory and for his precious word and for everything that has taken place today. And I also want to thank God for every one of you that came out in person that joined us. Uh, I want to encourage you to be here tomorrow, 6.30. Be, be there or be square. Glory be, <laughs> be there or be square. That's a good one. Glory be to God. 6.30, guys, on those Mondays, we go into deeper things. We go into more meat 
that we're not able to go into just on Sunday morning. So we encourage you to join us tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. If you can't join us in person, join us online. And uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Right as we dismiss, I want you to help me in saying this, that what is in front of you is greater. Let's, I want to say this again. What's in front of you is far greater than what? Anything you've ever seen. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise and consider yourselves dismissed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.